morning. Welcome to worship today at Prince of Peace. I am Pastor Libby Howe. I serve here as your lead pastor, and this is I'm Pastor Anna Sorensen. And we are uh, delighted to be able to lead you in worship together this morning. And uh, as we uh, get started, I'd like to just uh, make a few uh, announcements or uh, prayer concerns for you. The first is we want to thank uh, Christy for being our musician this morning. Thank you, Christy, for sharing your musical gifts with us. And uh, like you, uh, you'll hear named in our prayers today, Terry Meyer, who is undergoing uh, treatment for cancer and has uh, allowed us and invited us to keep him in prayer for that. So with those uh, thoughts on our hearts and minds, and, uh, I invite you into a time of silence as we prepare our hearts and minds to worship today. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, one refuge, our delight, our beginning, and our end. Amen. Let us come in truth before the one who loves us and has freed us from our sin. Eternal One, robed in majesty and mercy, we confess that sin has taken hold of us, and we are complicit in its power. We are disturbed in spirit, and our hearts cannot rest. Unbind us and set us free. Lead us again to the waters of rebirth, that we may live just and generous lives for the good of your world and the care of our neighbors, following in the servant way of Jesus. Amen. These words are trustworthy and true, Christ bore our sins once for all on the cross, swallowing up death forever. And for his sake, you are forgiven. But God remembers your sin no more. Let your heart be glad again and rejoice in your salvation. Amen. We join in singing hymn number 597 in your red and no My hope is built on nothing less.
of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, your sovereign purpose brings salvation to birth. Give us faith to be steadfast amid the tumults of this world, trusting that your kingdom comes and your will is done through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Please be seated as Mark reads to us from our scriptures. A reading from Daniel. The book of Daniel is an example of apocalyptic literature, which is full of strange visions and symbolism. Arising during times of great persecution, apocalyptic literature is concerned with God's revelation about the end of time and the coming kingdom of God, when God will vindicate the righteous who have been persecuted. At that time, Michael, the great prince, the protector of your people, shall arise. There shall be a time of anguish, such as has never occurred since nations first came into existence. But at that time, your people will be delivered. Everyone who is found written in the book, many of those who sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake, some to everlasting life, and some to shame and everlasting contempt. Those who are wise shall shine like the brightness of the sky, and those who lead many to righteousness like the stars forever and ever. Word of God, word of life, thanks be to God. A reading from Hebrews. Images of worship and sacrifice are used throughout Hebrews to highlight what Christ has uniquely accomplished through his death. Because we have received forgiveness through Christ's death, we live with sincere hearts by trusting in God's promises and encouraging love and good works from each other. Every priest stands day after day at his service, offering again and again the same sacrifices that can never take away sins. But when Christ had offered, for all time, a single sacrifice for sin, he sat down at the right hand of God, and since then has been waiting until his enemies would be made a footstool for his feet. For by a single offering, he has perfected for all those who are sanctified. Therefore, my friends, since we have confidence to enter the sanctuary by the blood of Jesus, by the new and living way that he opened for us through the curtain, that is, through his flesh, and since we have a great priest over the house of God, let us approach with a true heart, in full assurance of faith, with our hearts sprinkled clean from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold fast to the confession of our hope without wavering, for he who has promised is faithful. And let us consider how to provoke one another to love and good deeds, not neglecting to meet together, as is the habit of some, but encouraging one another, and all the more as you see the day approaching. Word of God, word of life, thanks and see God. I invite you to stand as we sing the Alleluia together. <laughs> Sign 
that all these things are about to be accomplished. Then Jesus said to them, Beware that no one leads you astray. Many will come in my name and say, I am he, and they will lead many astray. When you hear of wars and rumors of wars, do not be alarmed. This must take place. The end is still to come. For a nation will rise against nation, kingdom against kingdom. There will be earthquakes in various places. There will be famines. This is but the beginning of the birth pangs. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated.
Is it now the end? Are the troubles of our age the ones that will finally bring God's intervention? Are the sorrows we see and the terrors that we hear about so often? Is now the time that the world will be remade in peace? The four disciples in Mark's Gospel reading, they wanted to know this too. Would the destruction of the temple in Jerusalem be the beginning of the end? James and John and Peter and Andrew wanted to know when. When, Lord, when will this be? And Jesus doesn't really answer their question. He redirects them. Yes, there will be terrors. Do not be alarmed. These are but earth pains. Instead of saying when, Jesus lays out for the disciples a way to live. A way to live that doesn't simply focus on the destruction of the temple or the terrors. Instead, he says, beware that no one lead you astray. Many will come in my name and say, I am he, and they will lead many astray. So here we are in the middle of November 2024, reading apocalyptic literature. I don't think it's an invitation, actually, to say this is the end but an invitation to say what is being made clear before us. And what this text is making clear for me today, in the middle of November 2024, is that we often trust or put our hope into things that are not worthy of our trust and our hope. The disciples looked at that temple and its enormous stones, and they said, surely this building will stand forever. No, Jesus said, it will be thrown down. And it was within a generation the Romans came in the year 70 and laid siege to Jerusalem, and the temple was destroyed. You can still go and stand on the Mount of Olives and look out over the Kidron Valley to the hill where the temple once stood. It is a place divided, a place of discord and occasional violence. I wonder, were the disciples tempted to trust in the permanence of the temple? rather than the God who was worshipped there. I think we are often tempted to put our trust into human institutions, like, say, the church. The church is just a building, just a collection of governing documents, a group of people, People who are filled with both good and hurtful words and actions. Sometimes we put our hope in people to save us. We've just been through an election season and maybe the candidates exaggerate a little bit. <laughs> A lot of language about the chosen one, or the one who will finally save us when Obama was first a candidate. And there's been some of that recently as well in the last few months. And I want to be very clear that that kind of language is blasphemy when it comes out of the mouths of Christians, because we already have a savior. Politicians are people with good and hurtful words and actions. Political parties are institutions filled with people who have good and hurtful actions. And they are the wrong place to put our hope. How do Christians live? 
when the world is crumbling. There's a quote that has been attributed both to Martin Luther and to St. Francis of Assisi and probably a few dozen others. I've not been able to find who actually said it, but it's a good quote. If the world were to end tomorrow, Brother Martin or Brother Francis or whoever said, if I knew the world were to end tomorrow, I would plant a tree. This is the type of living and waiting that Christians are to do when the world seems like it's crumbling around us. It's the kind of hope that Hebrews encourages in us. Let us hold fast to the confession of our hope without wavering. For he who has promised, that's Jesus, is faithful. And then let us consider how to provoke one another to love and to good deeds. Not neglecting to meet together as is the habit of some, but encouraging one another and all the more as you see the day approaching. How are Christians to live when it feels like the world is falling apart? We provoke one another to love and good deeds. Encouragement, provoking one another to love, gathering for worship and fellowship. Nowhere in Hebrews are we asked to provoke one another to fear, to incite panic. It tells us to love, to worship, to do good, to encourage one another. Sometimes, it really does seem like the world must be ending. There are fires and hurricanes and ice shells falling into the sea and shootings and kidnappings and dictators rising and immense poverty and war and the greatest refugee crisis since World War II. And Jesus had words for his disciples, and he has words for us, too. Beware that no one lead you astray. Now, remember I told you that these words Jesus gives to his disciples in the last week of his life. They are in Jerusalem. Jesus knows what's coming. It is his passion and death. They are headed to the cross. And Jesus said, these are but the birth pains. My childbirth instructor said that birth pains are terrible, but they end with joy. Pastor Liz Albertson, who was our colleague in this synod, wrote about this text. She said, what if we are all giving birth to something new? What if we're all being born? How do we live when it seems like everything is crumbling? We follow Jesus even when the world falls to pieces. We follow Jesus to the cross and through the cross to new life. We continue to follow Jesus, not being distracted about speculation about is this but provoking one another to love and to good deeds. How shall we live? We follow Jesus, we seek forgiveness, and we offer forgiveness. We follow Jesus by caring for neighbors and for strangers. And we follow Jesus to the cross, which is the only way to new life. Thanks be to God. Amen. And we'll sing together in the Red Hymnal 652. We'll be singing verses 1 through 3.
for all of creation. O oh God, in the washing of water, you set us free from the power of sin and death. Unite all of the baptized in the covenant that you have made with us as we strive for your justice and peace in all the earth. Merciful God, receive our prayer. By your mercy, you sustain all creation. Stir us from complacency with the harm we inflict upon the earth. And give us hearts to adopt sustainable ways of life that care for your creation. Merciful God, you see our prayer. With selfless power, you protect all those who take refuge in you. As nations rise against nations, Defend those who are displaced or impacted by war or violence. We especially pray for Ukraine and for the Holy Land of Israel and Palestine. Empower people and nations to pursue peace. Merciful God, receive our prayers. With your presence, you give us fullness and joy. Care for those for whom joy feels distant. Be present with those who are experiencing illness of any kind. We especially hold Terry before you today. Bring all those who are ill healing and wholeness. Merciful God, hear Through the years, O oh God, you have gathered your church in this community for worship fellowship, formation, and service. Help us look beyond the walls of our building and hear clearly where you are calling us to ministry. Merciful God, we see our prayer. With thanksgiving, we remember the saints who delight in your everlasting presence. As their lives inspire ours, provoke us to love holding fast to the confession of faith that is our hope in you. Merciful God, receive our prayer. We offer our prayers to you, gracious God, trusting in your unending love for all you have made through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Some prayers to share 
and uh, so favorite dinner and bedtime prayers. My favorite, um, one of the very first prayers I ever learned when I was little, um, and I mean I really was very little, um, and I included it, it was a bedtime prayer, and it was, I see the moon and the moon sees me, God bless the moon and God bless me. That was the whole thing, amen. So, Everything from the most flowery and beautiful long prayers to the simplest uh, prayers are welcome. So if you have a prayer that you'd like to be included, you can email Kendra. Um, and next Sunday, following worship, we'll be downstairs in the fellowship hall doing an intergenerational activity with all of those prayers. So, uh, so plan to stay after for coffee downstairs next week. Also, uh, Pastor Kent Johnson, uh, wanted me to make sure wanted to make sure that you know about it. It hasn't been able to be as widely publicized as we hoped. There, um, and we prayed for peace in the Holy Land today, so it would be appropriate to follow up that prayer with action if you're able to attend an event called Building Peace and Justice in Palestine and Israel, a conversation on collective liberation with Palestinian and Israeli activists Osama Ilwat and Rotem Levin. That's tonight at Viterbo at the School of Nursing building uh, at seven o'clock or tomorrow, Monday, at UWL um, at 2.15 at the Student Union. So if you would like or have more interest in that, I can make a copy of this or give you this flyer um, if you're interested and would be able to attend. And then finally, um, an announcement about Advent. Uh, you hopefully received your messenger or got that in your email. Uh, the theme for Advent this year, which begins on December 1st, is Words for the Beginning. You'll get your devotional booklet next Sunday, and you're welcome to take an extra for someone uh, if we haven't seen them for a while. In addition to the four Sundays in Advent, we will be having three Wednesday worship services that will be different. From Sunday, they'll be abbreviated about 35 to 40 minutes, um, and that will be December 4th, 11th, and 18th. You're welcome to come for a bite to eat beforehand at 5.30. Worship is at 6.30. We thank our food ministry for providing meals for us the first two weeks, and then there will be a potluck on that third Wednesday. So looking forward to seeing you for our special Advent worship. That is enough announcements for today. Oh wait, there's one more. I know it is. <laughs> so, yeah, go ahead. Kathy has something to say. This is the 10th year of the Lutheran Immigration and Refugee Services now called Global Refuges project called um, Hope for the Holidays. And what it is is cards created that are sent to them for distribution to immigrants and refugees in our country. And we've been pretty good about making sure we've got some to send to them each year. My goal for this year is 100 cards. I've got 80 made so far. But these cards are on the two round tables and they need first name only signatures. And if we can load them up with signatures, that would be great. There can be 10, 12 on a card. It doesn't matter, just first name. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Kevin. Make sure it's on. I'd like you to stand for the blessing in our closing hymn. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Our closing hymn is O Christ, Our Hope, number 604. And you read hymnal verses 1, 4, and 5.
acts of love. Thanks be to God.